Welcome to another video. I have question number three from the 2025 MIT Integration B Final. And this question is a little bit easier, especially at the beginning, compared to question number two, because number two was a bit clumsy for me because um, um, if you watch the video, you would see I explained that it was tougher. But this is a lot um, easier because I have a constant raised to a variable that's a floor. Well, I know I have two floors, but it's easier for me to conceive once we know the definition of the floor. Let's get into the video. Looking at the problem we have, if this was not a floor, then this is supposed to be an exponential function. This would be the base, and this would be um, the variable, the exponent, and then a function is supposed to go up this way, like this. Ta-da-da! From here, just goes up like this. But because the exponent is a floor, the floor stays constant for a while until you get to... So, every value from anything past zero, between zero and one, everything here is gonna have a floor of zero because that is the integer less than anything in this interval. So you're just gonna have a flat line, okay? Oh, but because it is this raised to power zero, it's gonna be one. And then as soon as this changes to, once you go past one, this interval between one and two, like this, the floor becomes one. So what you have is just going to be this value raised to power one because that would be the new floor. So it's going to be maybe some value starting from here like this. And then the next one is going to go like this. So everything is going to be along this line, but it's just going to be a bunch of floors like that. Ta -ta -da -da, ta -ta -ta -ta. So it goes on forever. So what we're integrating from zero to 10 is basically a bunch of Re sorry, rectangles like this. You see that? We just add up all of these. Once you can add up all of these, you're fine. So it's more like a Riemann sum. Okay, so that means if we use the definition of the floor, we can say if k is equal to the floor of x, then we can say that k is less than or equal to x and x is less than k plus one. This is the definition of the floor function. So, if I'm going to go here, I know that I'm going to be adding up a bunch of areas, so I'll be adding up several integrations. Because I started from zero to one, so look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Look, if I make up rectangles, chop, 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 like this, chop, chop, uh, chop, 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 uh oh, come on, that's terrible. Then this one, then this one, okay? See how many I got? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten rectangles, we're gonna have ten floors, okay? But remember, our first floor is not starting at, at one. We're not starting our floor from one, we're starting our floor from zero. So the 10th floor is gonna be what we call the ninth floor now. So we're gonna be summing up 10 integrals starting from the floor zero to floor nine. So what we're gonna have is this will be equal to the sum from k equals zero to nine of a bunch of integrals now, the values of x we're going to be integrating, oh, sorry, the values we'll be integrating will go from, see, instead of going from 0 to 10 now, we've, we're no longer dealing with that. We're dealing with this because the values of x that we're dealing with are now from k to k plus 1. So what you have here is going to be k, and this is k plus 1, and what you're integrating is the floor of 1 plus square root of 5 over 2 raised to power what is now this floor? We've defined it to be k. And that's it. It is still dx. Okay, this is, this only was easy for, I'm sure, I hope it's easy for you to understand, but this is easier, this was easier for me to figure out because now it's a lot easier because there is no x in the picture. 
what I have here is just a constant in this integral because this k may be changing but I'm integrating with respect to x so I can actually pull this to the back and say that this is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to 9 of what I have here the floor nice of now I'm sure since you saw this problem you've been saying I've seen this composition before 1 plus rad 5 over 2 is what we call the golden ratio and the popular symbol for it is phi which I call flower okay so but I'm just gonna say phi this time just to avoid controversy so <laughs> I'm gonna say that this is phi to the k nice multiplied by the integral from k to k plus 1 dx so what is here is just 1. If I integrate 1, what do I get? Let's get rid of this. Equal to the sum from k equals 0 to 9 of all the floors of phi to the k multiplied by, we're going to multiply this by, if you integrate this, you're going to just get x evaluated from k to k plus 1. You know that if you evaluate this, what do you get? You're going to get k plus 1 minus k, which is just 1. So it's just 1, basically 1, which is equal to, let me write it this way, that's going to be the sum from k equals 9, sorry, equals 0 to 9 of the floor of phi to the k um, times 1. Because that's what this evaluation is going to be. It's just one. Now, we know that I is basically the sum from k equals 0 to 9 of this expression, phi to the k. Nice. Nothing else. Okay. Now that we have this as our final answer, well, we know that if you're starting from k equals 0 to 9, you will have to list out everything unless you have a computer to generate your answer. So what I'm going to do is say this is equal to phi raised to power 0. That's the first one. What really makes this exercise difficult is because we're not looking for the approximate values of the powers of phi. Because if we want the approximate values of the powers of phi, it would just be the Lucas sequence that I put in the community quiz that we all answered. Okay, this is the Lucas, um, well, it's a series in this case because we're adding them, but we're looking for the floors, so we have to be precisely accurate. Okay, let me throw something out there, and then in the future, I might do a video on it. Whenever you wanna find a power of phi, you can just use the Fibonacci sequence. Remember the Fibonacci sequence is um, let's say this is n, and n starts from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It keeps going, and the Fibonacci sequence, f of n, is generally, you start with 1, 1, 2, 3, 5. That's how the terms go, and then you go 5, 8, 13, um, 21, 34. Okay, I think these are the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine terms. So from one to nine, this other terms you're gonna get. Now, how do you obtain these powers from the Fibonacci sequence? Well, just know that phi raised to power n can be obtained by saying, hey, I am going to multiply phi by the Fibonacci number that corresponds to n, just like that, multiplication, plus the Fibonacci number that's before this one, f of n minus 1. Okay, I'm just going to do two examples, okay? This is obvious. Anything raised to the power 0 is 1, and the floor of 1 is 1, so we can easily say our answer here is 1. Phi to the 1 is 1 1.618 approximately, as I wrote here. So we can say, yeah, we needed to have this. 
So we can say the floor of 1.618 is going to be 1. So I can write my 1 here. So that's the answer to the second one. Now to obtain the third one, we can use this formula and say that phi to the second, let's change this to 2, is the second Fibonacci number multiplied by phi. What's the second Fibonacci number? It's 1. Okay, this is just numbering. Okay, the second Fibonacci number when n equals 2 is going to be 1 times phi. So this is 1, you see that? So this is 1 times phi plus the Fibonacci number before the second term, which is going to be this one plus 1. Okay, so the answer to what we have is basically 1 times phi plus 1, which is phi plus 1. Phi plus 1 is 1 1.618 plus 1. That gives us um, 2.618, the floor of 2.618. So the answer here is going to be the floor of 2.618, which is just 2. We got the next answer. Okay, let's plus. Let's try another number. I'm just going to try the last one. Okay, I'll try the last one. You can fill in the other ones. I'm just going to write the answers. Okay, so the last one is going to be to the ninth power. So phi to the ninth power is going to be the ninth, the Fibonacci number when n equals 9. So that's going to be 34. So I'm going to be multiplying phi by 34 and adding the term that is before 34, which is going to be plus 21. So it's going to be like this. So the biggest calculation I'm doing is 34 times phi. Well, if you do this, multiply this by 34 and then add 21, you're going to be getting 76 point something. Okay, 76 point blah, blah, blah. So the floor of it is 76. Okay, so we're going to have a bunch of numbers, which I'm going to cheat and quickly check, and then I'm going to write them out. Okay, so if we add up all of these numbers, we end up with 193. And this is the value of this definite integral with the floor function as the exponent. Let me put that formula on the board one more time. Is equal to the Fibonacci number multiplied by phi plus the Fibonacci number before n, which is going to be f of n minus 1. All you need is know what the Fibonacci number is, and you're good. And the Fibonacci number is 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and you keep going. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.